why should you believe in Jesus? And if you believe, why should you follow Him and become a disciple? Those are the questions we're going to look at today in this very first session of Are You a Disciple? This past week in your homework, you studied those very first disciples. You studied their backstory and you learned that several of those disciples were first disciples of John the Baptist. And you learned that because they followed John the Baptist, they were already looking for the Messiah. And when John pointed out Jesus to them, they believed. This is the important thing I want you to know as we begin this uh, first week of your Are You Disciple study. And that is this, the first step that you must take before you can become a disciple is you become a Christian. And that is what those first disciples had already done. When they met Christ, they were looking for Him. They had already made the decision to believe. So today we're going to look at the call of Christ. And we're going to look at that first call, which is the call of to salvation. It's the call to believe, which is what the disciples had done already before they even met Jesus. They believed. John 1, 12 says this, But to all who believed in Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become the children of God. Belief is important. You must believe in Jesus Christ in order to receive salvation. That word believe just simply means to place your faith in the work that Christ did for you in His death, burial, and resurrection. You don't place your faith in the things that you've done, but the things that He's done. And so we see belief is essential, John, according to John 1, 12, so that you can become a child of God. So let me ask you a question. Why should you believe? That's what we're going to look at in this first half of this video today of Are You a Disciple? And I hope it will encourage you in your faith and remind you why you believed in the first place or that it will help you help somebody else understand why they should believe and place their faith in Jesus Christ. Why should you believe in Jesus? Well, let me give you reason number one, okay? Because Jesus is eternal. Because He is eternal. This past week you looked at John chapter 1 and you began to see the backstory of Jesus Christ and you learned that He didn't just pre-exist creation, what we can see in this world today. He always was and He always will be. We see that in John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And it says there, In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. Now if you follow that chapter all the way down, you begin to see that that Word was identified as Jesus Himself. And so what we see there is that Jesus didn't just pre-exist before creation. Jesus existed eternally. He existed eternally with God. He always was and He always will be. A wonderful uh, theologian named Merrill Tenney says this about this verse. I love this quote. He says, literally, John 1.1 could and should be rendered. When the beginning began, the Word was already there. This is tantamount to saying that the Word predates time or creation. Why should you believe in Jesus? Why should you place your faith in Him? Well, He's eternal. He always was. He always will be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And that's the first reason you should believe in Jesus. John 1, 1 and 2 gives us the second reason why we should believe in Jesus, why we should place our faith in Him. And we see in John 1, again, as I read it, it's in the beginning, the Word already existed and the Word was with God. And the Word, what does it say? It says the Word was God. The second reason you need to believe in Jesus and why you can find encouragement in your faith when you get discouraged, when you begin to hear of all these other different beliefs and other different faiths and you wonder, have I really placed my faith in something that's secure? Have I really placed my faith in something that will really lead me to heaven and that is eternally secure for me? The second reason is because Jesus, because He is God. He is deity. He is equal with God, all right? He is part of that divine trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He wasn't just another good teacher. He wasn't just a great religious leader. The world wants us to believe that He was just some other kind of a leader. But listen, Jesus was more than that. 
the Bible teaches that Jesus was God. And in fact, in J Jesus himself in John chapter 8, verse 24, he says, unless you believe that I am, and he used the word that they used in the book of Exodus that God spoke to uh, Moses and told him was his name. His name was I am, God said, I am. And Jesus uses the memorial name of God, I am, in John 8, 24. And he says, unless you believe that I am, that I'm God, then you will die in your sins. Jesus taught that he was deity, that he was equal with God, that he was God the Son. And we see he's equal with God because he is God. The reason, the second reason you should believe that Jesus is the way is because Jesus is God. He is deity. Well, the third reason why you can place your faith confidently in Jesus as your Savior and Lord, and while you can tell others, your kids, your grandkids, your friends, and those who ask you, why do you believe what you believe? Well, one of those reasons has to do with the miracles of Jesus Christ. That's one of the reasons that you can believe that Jesus is who He said He is. And you looked at many of those miracles this week in your homework. The very first miracle that Jesus performed was at a wedding in Cana, a wedding where a catastrophe happened. They ran out of wine, and Jesus' mother Mary came to Him and told Him about it. And then we see the miraculous happen, but it's just the first time it's going to happen many, many times. But in John chapter 2, verse 7, we see that Jesus told the servants, Fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, Now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. And when the master of ceremonies tasted the water, it was now wine. Jesus changed the water into wine that day. But listen, there were many, many miracles that Jesus performed. In fact, the book of John says that there were so many that it would be impossible to list them all. But some of the miracles you looked at this week in your homework were a miracle where we see Jesus who delivered a man who was possessed by many demons. You saw Jesus heal a woman who had had a hemorrhage for over 12 years. You also saw Jesus raise a dead girl, Jairus' daughter, from the dead, bring her back to life. The third reason you can believe that Jesus is who He said He is is because His miracles prove that He is God's Son. You can have confidence that your faith is placed in the right place in Jesus Christ because Jesus proved He was who He said He is by the miracles that He performed. There's another reason why you should place your faith and why your faith is placed in something sound, in someone sound, in Jesus Christ. And that is because Jesus fulfills the Old Testament prophecies. There are hundreds of prophecies about Messiah. There are prophecies about Messiah's birth, about His uh, life, about His death, and even about His second coming. And Jesus fulfilled all of those prophecies about His birth and about His death and resurrection. There are other prophecies in the Old Testament that have yet to be fulfilled about Jesus, but because He fulfilled those others about His coming and about His ministry and about His death and resurrection, we can know that those prophecies about His second coming will be fulfilled as well. Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies. One of my favorite is in Psalm chapter 22. Let me just read this to you, written by David. And what we see here are the words of Christ hundreds of years before Christ was crucified. Listen what the psalmist says. In Psalm 22, 1, he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Familiar words, because those were Jesus' exact words as he hung on the cross. He dropped down to verse 7 and it says, All who see me sneer at me. They separate with the lip. They wag their heads saying, Commit yourself to the Lord. Let Him deliver you. Let Him rescue you because He delights in Him. And we see that that was fulfilled at the cross as the crowd sneered and made fun of Him. In, in verse 16 it says, They pierced my hands and my feet. 
And then in verse 18, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Listen, this is only one of many, many prophecies from the Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled. You saw in your homework this week in John chapter 2, as Jesus went into the temple and he cleansed the temple, he drove out the money changers. And the disciples, when they saw that happen, it says there in John 2, verse 17, it says, Then the disciples remembered this prophecy from the Scriptures, Passion for God's house will consume me. Listen, you saw other Old Testament prophecies in your homework this week, but you can know this. You can know that Jesus really is God's Son, that He is the one in whom you should place your faith, and you should place your trust, because Jesus is the one who fulfills all prophecy. There are endless reasons I could give you for why you should believe in Jesus Christ and why your faith is secure in placing your faith in Him. But the fifth and final one I'm going to give you today is this. You should believe in Jesus because He is the only way to God. He's the only way to God. If you ever want to go to heaven, if you ever want to find peace with God, it's the only one way, and that's through Jesus. Jesus himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I'm the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except by me. Now listen, this is not popular in today's world. They're going to call you judgmental. They may even call you a bigot. They may call us all kinds of names and say that we're being judgmental. The world may try to shame us for believing that there's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus Christ. But you and I must do what Paul said that he does in Romans chapter 6. And he said this, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. You and I cannot be ashamed of that. We must stand and we must place our faith in the one who says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Listen, I love HGTV. I love DIY Network. I love all that stuff. My husband and I are always involved in all kinds of DIY projects around our house. Uh, in fact, we even had a huge DIY project a few years ago. We built our house. I love, I'm all about do it yourself. And there are lots of things that you can do yourself. And that's good and you should do that. But there's one thing you'll never be able to DIY. And that is your salvation. Because salvation is D-O-N-E. It's done. It was done in Christ. And when you place your faith in Him, when you believe, your salvation is sure when you place your salvation in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So you should believe because Jesus, He's the only way. He's the only way to God. Well, the first call of Christ, the call to believe, the call to salvation, if you take that step, if you accept that call, it will lead to the second call of Christ. And the call of Christ, the second call, is the call to discipleship. It is the call to follow me. To follow me. Jesus invites you and me to follow Him. You saw this over and over and over again in your homework this past week as you saw Jesus in that simple two-word invitation, that invitation really of a lifetime, follow me, follow me, follow me. And in John 1, you saw it for the first time. It says that the next day, Jesus went into Galilee and He found Philip and He said, Come, follow me. This is the beginning of discipleship. It is when you respond to that call of follow me, just like Mark did, just like James and John and Peter did. That follow me is a life-changing call. But let me tell you something. If you fail to respond to Jesus' call of follow me, there's a danger. And here's the danger, and you're going to learn about it more in the weeks ahead in your homework. If you fail to follow Jesus as a disciple, the danger is you'll become what I call a casual Christian. First Corinthians calls it a carnal Christian. You'll become a Christian who won't go forward, who won't mature in your faith, and who won't be able to follow Christ in a mature way. So listen, He's calling you, if you've been a Christian, now to become a disciple. And right now is a critical juncture. Will you choose to follow Him? Will you become a disciple? Let me give you the reasons why you should say yes to that invitation to follow me. One of my favorite reasons for following Jesus is the one I'm fixing to give you. 
It is the call to follow me is an exciting call and it is a call that will lead you way outside your comfort zone a lot of times and it will lead you on a path of walking by faith, following him to doing things, being involved in things and following God's plan and purpose for your life, which may be very, very different from the plan and dreams that you had on your own. You know, I'm standing here in front of a camera. I've written a Bible study that you're doing. If you had told me years ago that this would be God's plan for me, that he would call me to do this, I would have said, no way, no way. But I have to tell you, listen, when I heard God call and when he began to affirm that to me in so many different ways, I have to tell you, it's a very fulfilling thing and an exciting thing to leave your comfort zone and follow Jesus as his disciple. And here's the thing. And this reason for following Jesus is because He will instruct and enable you to do things you've never done before. He'll instruct and enable you to do things you've never done before. Now listen, He doesn't just call you to do things. He enables you when He calls you to do that thing. He gives you the ability to do what He's called you to do. You saw this this week in your homework as you saw Luke chapter 5 where Jesus was preaching there on the shore of Galilee. And He was preaching basically out of Peter's boat. Peter's boat was where He was standing and the crowd was watching Him there along the seashore of Galilee. But after He finished speaking, it says there in Luke chapter 5 verse 4 that he, when He finished speaking, He said to Peter, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. But Peter said, Master, we worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. I love Peter's honest response. He's saying, you know, we don't usually fish that way. We've already fished at night. We didn't catch anything. We usually don't go out at the middle part of the day. But if you say so, Lord, I will. Now, that is exactly what Jesus does to you and me as his disciples. He calls us to do things that seem kind of just out of the way to us, things that go against the way we usually do things. But I want to tell you, it's an exciting life as a disciple to follow him. So when you follow Jesus and when you accept that call, he's going to lead you to his divine destiny for you. And it's an exciting, exciting thing. And that's my favorite reason for following Jesus. That day on the Sea of Galilee, Peter learned the second reason why you want to follow Jesus and become his disciple. And you see this in Luke chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. It says that as they obeyed the Lord, as Peter obeyed Jesus, it says at this time when they set out, their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. And a shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon both boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. Can you imagine? This is going to be a fish story that Peter and his companions are going to tell for the rest of their lives because this is the second thing that you learn about following Jesus and why you should follow Him. Follow Him because He will enable you to see and experience things you have never seen or experienced before. Not only will He call and instruct you and enable you to do things you've never done before, but He'll let you see things and experience things you've never seen or experienced before. I have a friend at my church. Her name is Sharon. She's a few years older than I am, but when she was in her early 50s, her nest was empty. Her kids were all gone, gone. Her husband was still working. And the Lord began to do a no, new work in her life. And He began to call her to leave the comfort zone where she was and to take a mission trip. It was a mission trip, I believe, to Africa with our church. She'd never done anything like that before, never even have dreamed that she would do it. But she knew Jesus was calling her. And so she took that trip. She was afraid. She was nervous. But when she got out of the boat, in a sense, when she began to set foot there in Africa and experience and see what God did through that mission trip and the lives and the, of the people that she was able to minister to, she came back with just a fresh awakening of what Jesus could do in her life, what He could show her and how she could experience Him in brand new ways. At this time, my friend Sharon has been on dozens of mission trips. And if she were here today, listen, if you talk to her, she'd make you want to take one of those mission trips so that you could see and experience the things that she's seen and experienced that only Jesus can do. That's the second reason why you want to follow Jesus and be His disciple.
The third reason you want to follow Jesus and become his disciple is seen in Luke chapter 5, verse 8, as the story continues with Peter. It says that when Peter realized what had happened, that that great catch had occurred in his life and that uh, he had had all those fish and his nets were tearing, when he realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh, Lord, please leave me. I am too much of a sinner to be around you. You know, Jesus had told him to set out again and to cast the nets, and Peter had reluctantly done that. You know, he didn't expect to experience or see what he really did experience and see, did he? He didn't know. And when he saw it, it broke him. It just broke him, and it just humbled him. And he fell before Jesus in repentance, and he said, Lord, I can't even be around you. Leave me, for I'm a sinner. I'm no good to be around you. And this, listen, is a very positive thing in Peter's life. It is a turning point when he recognizes that Jesus is the one that knows better about everything and not just about following him, but about fishing and everything else. And so Peter is humbled here. And what we see is Peter's brokenness in this moment. In James chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You need to follow Jesus because he will keep you humble and keenly aware of your own sin. And that is a very positive thing because God opposes the, the proud and He gives grace to the humble. This, the fourth reason why you need to follow Jesus just continues in this story of Luke chapter 5. Look at verse 10. It says that Jesus said to Peter, Don't be afraid. This is Jesus' response to Peter. From now on, you're going to be fishing for people. We mess up. We don't believe. We fall face down and we're broken when Jesus shows us what He can do even in spite of us, when we know we weren't even prepared to experience or see what He's shown us. And in that broken moment, Jesus doesn't look at us and say, well, can't use you anymore. No, what He does is He reaches out to us in love and forgiveness and He continues to call us to follow Him. When you fall and when you fail and when I fall and fail, when I'm broken and I repent, Jesus calls me, come on, get up and follow me. Follow me as my disciple. When you recognize and confess your sin as Peter did, you will receive the love and forgiveness of Christ. And that's the fourth reason why you should want to follow Jesus. Because He will love and forgive you unconditionally. He'll love and forgive you unconditionally. He'll give you a hope and a future, and He'll call you, come, follow me. Those are the third and fourth reasons why you should follow Jesus. Well, finally, why else should you follow Jesus? Well, what we see in Luke chapter 5, 10 is that Jesus speaks to Peter and his companions there in that verse. And he says this, don't be afraid of what's happening here, guys. He says, from now on, you're going to be fishing for people. What he is telling them is this, I don't see you as just fishermen. I have a greater plan for you. And your life is going to be from this point on all about fishing for men, reaching others with me and even without me, as they went forward as the first apostles. What we see there in following Jesus, the reason you ought to follow Jesus is because He has an eternal plan and purpose for your life. He doesn't just have a plan for the here and now. Jesus has an eternal plan for your life. He wants your life to count for all time and eternity. You know, that is something that sometimes we don't really even think about. We just are thinking about the here and now. When I pursue my own plans and do my own thing, most of the time that's not going to count for all time and eternity. But when I follow Jesus, even in the ordinary things that He leads me to do, my life can have an eternal impact. You want to follow Jesus because He has an eternal plan and purpose for your life. You know, there's a man in Scripture. He's in the book of Ecclesiastes. He wrote that book, and his name was King Solomon. He was the wisest man who had ever lived. He was a man who loved projects. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, he lists all of his accomplishments and all the big things that he did. And yet, in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, as he talks about that list of accomplishments, you know what he says about them? He says, they're meaningless. They're vain. 
They leave me feeling empty. You know, when I follow my dreams and pursue my plans, that's often how I feel, don't you? But listen, when we follow God's plan for our life, when I follow Jesus, there is contentment, there is purpose. Girls, listen, the reason you want to follow Jesus is because He has a great big plan for your life. And not only a plan for your life, but an eternal plan and purpose for your life. So, how can you find and pursue God's great plan for your life? Well, it begins by accepting the first call of Christ, to believe. It begins at salvation. But if you've already settled that, listen, what you have to do next is you have to do what those first disciples did. Let's look what they did at Luke chapter 5, verse 11. It says there that as soon as they landed that boat that day, they left everything and they followed Jesus Christ. They left everything behind and they put their eyes on Christ and they accepted that invitation to follow Him. And that is where many of you are. You're at a crossroads. He's calling you to follow Him. There's only one question that needs to be asked. And the remaining question is this. Will you? Will you follow Jesus and become His disciple? Let's pray. Well, Jesus, I do just pray today that many will hear today your call not only to believe, that's the beginning, but Father, I, be I pray that those who believe would also hear the call to discipleship, the call to follow me. Lord, I pray that they would respond just as Peter, James, John, and the others did that day on the Sea of Galilee, that Lord, these women would be willing to leave everything and follow you and become your disciples. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.